it's black friday i don't know what order these um videos are going to come in i don't think it matters it's more to do with the content i'm black Fright and welcome to my channel um i tend to talk about anything um that i think might be of interest to the public and um yeah and i hope people find it useful um thank you for subscribing thank you for liking and thank you for sharing now today, I, I don't know if you remember, I did a vlog recently about the biometrics and I flippantly said at the end, I don't know if you remember, if for so those of you who may not have got to the end, but I flippantly said at the end, we don't know what they're doing with those biometrics, they could be scanning passports, I don't know if you remember that. Well, lo and behold, I said that purely you know, off the cuff. I had no idea that that was even a possibility. I just thought, you know, if they're dealing with photographs, when they're dealing with biometric, why not um, scan a passport and use that for information to add to your database or a driving license? Anyway, I'm going to have to read again because it's a very... Um, well, not difficult, but it's a bit inter intricate. Okay, so the, Ep the Electronic Privacy Information Center, they're called EPIC. They've written to the Department of Homeland Security because they're concerned about the biometric machine or how they people get biometric data. Okay, so they've got a Data Privacy and Integrity Advisory Committee and they had a meeting. So Epic has now come out, has written to them, and they sh he's told them, or she, whoever it is, has told them about their comments. Now, Epic urges D DPIAC, which is what I called the, D the Data Privacy and Integrity Advisory Committee, now you understand why I've got to read it, which is abbreviated as DPIAC, to advise the CBP, which is the Customs Border Patrol, to one, halt the, implementation, halt, the, halt the implementation of its facial recognition program until Congress passes proper regulatory safeguards to protect against the misuse of facial recognition and other biometric surveillance techniques, and two, conduct notice and comment rulemaking on the biometric entry exit program and any other implementation of facial recognition that impacts American citizens. Now, this is for Americans, but we know that they're using it in the UK. They're using the same system or a similar system, which is faulty. So I am using this and we can share it across the globe as being relevant. We're not talking about China, China because they have fine-tuned theirs, but we're talking about what they're using in America and what they're using in the UK. Okay, so EPIC is a public interest research centre in Washington. It was established in 1994 to focus public attention on the emerging civil liberties issues and protect privacy, the First Amendment and constitutional values. Now, the CBP, which is the Customs Border Patrol Biometric Entry and Exit Program, it's without legal authority or the opportunity for public comment. The US Customs and Border Protection, I called it patrol, didn't I? It's actually protection, has deployed facial recognition technology in US airports, seaports, and land ports of entry and collected biometric identifiers from American travelers. Further, the agency plans to incrementally deploy biometric capabilities across all modes of travel, air, sea, and land by the fiscal year 2025. Now that seems like it's quite a long way away, but we all know time passes as you're getting older. According to the most recent Privacy Impact Assessment, which is in brackets PIA, the Traveller Verification Services, which is TVS, retains both US citizens and non-citizen photos in the TVS cloud matching service for up to 12 hours 
photos of non-immigrant aliens and lawful permanent residents are stored for up to 14 days in an automated targeting system database. And photos of in-scope travellers are retained in indent for up to 75 years. 75 years. Bloody hell. That's a long time. That's like they've all, that's almost like they've committed a crime. And in scope travellers, they are what did I read it to for them to be? Oh. I'm not even gonna try to explain it. Because if I try to explain it, I'm gonna explain it wrong. So I'm gonna leave it for there and then I'll I'll put it in the um the description below the correct definition of an in-scope traveller. I did try to look for it, but it was a bit vague. But I'll look for it again and I'll put it in the description. Okay, what else have we got? Oh, it's here. In-scope travellers are any aliens other than those specifically exempted. Hmm. I guess the... I guess they're the equivalent of foreign nationals. I bet they're the equivalent of foreign nationals. Anyway, who am I? Who am I? Okay, um, I'm not going to read everything, but it does say the DIPIAC meeting on biometrics, di biometrics in December 2018. Information from flights manifest provided by airlines with pho photographs obtained from State Department database databases to prepare galleries to match with photos captured at ports of entry. I'll read that again because I got a bit tongue-tied. DPIAC meeting, that's D-P-I-A-C, on biometrics in December 2018, information from flight manifests provided by airlines with photographs obtained from State Department databases to prepare galleries to match with photos captured at ports of entry. Now, if I typed this, there would have been some commas in there somewhere, but because I didn't, that's why it's difficult to read and let it flow properly. Okay, if Customs Border Protection does not have access to advanced passenger information, such as for pedestrians or privately owned vehicles at land ports of entry, the Customs Border Protection will build galleries using photographs of frequent crosses for that Pacific port of entry. So you know what they call frequent travellers? So anybody who's seen frequently walking or pedestrian or using their car, they're going to be using um, having a gallery of photographs of those too. The Customs Border Protection uses its own equipment as well as that of private firms, other government agencies and foreign governments to capture face images. This vast biometric collection program exposes Americans and other travellers to substantial privacy risks. The problem begins when the State Department, without legal authority, transferred facial images collected from passport applications to the customs border. Um, I'll call it patrol because, ah, uh, what was it? Protection. Customs border protection. See, this is what I was saying. This largely immutable biometric information is then used to conduct government surveillance unrelated to the purpose for which the photos were collected. The legislation this program purports to implement does not authorise this activity. So they're taking photographs from passport applications and using this biometric system to capture it and put it on their gallery and do what goodness knows what with it. That is really inappropriate. I mean, it's different. I can understand when they use it like in a mass crowd. They're looking for someone who's a criminal or like with Notting Hill Carnival. They were looking for people using knives. So they had this massive, you know, that that's what it's for. Those biometric machines are supposed to be for large crowds. So you can get a broad... Um, span of people in one scope but they they're actually using it and scanning bloody passport photographs 
and put them in the system to see what they can find. I think that's diabolical. Anyway, it says, and there is no, there is currently no federal legislation to regulate the use of facial recognition or other biometric surveillance techniques in these circumstances. As such, the PIAC should recommend that the program cease immediately. It's probably too far gone now. They're probably doing it anyway. So they're not going to stop, are they? I mean, and if there's no legislation in place to regulate them, they can do what they want with them, to be honest. We're at their mercy. As long as you go through the airport or if you go through near a building that's got them, that's it. I hear they've got them near the White House. So if you want to go there, you're going to be on that machine. Um, like I said, this is pages long. I'm just kind of, I've highlighted some bits that I'm sharing with you. And I'll put the link at the bottom so you can follow it if you're interested in what I'm saying. The report fails to address the fundamental problem of using photos collected for one purpose, i.e. to apply for a visa or a passport, and subsequently using those photos for another purpose. <sighs> I'll tell you. While well, most recent PIA for the programme assures US citizens that their images captured by the Customs Border Protection will be deleted after the prescribed time limit, the transfer of the photos obtained by the State Department to the Customs Border Protection lacks legal authority and it is in violation of the Federal Privacy Act. This programme is not voluntary. There is no way to opt out of the CB Facial Recognition Program. So providing you're in that space, you don't have a you don't have an opportunity to say you don't want it. And even if you did, they'd have your photograph anyway. Personal data is automatically transferred from the State Department to another agency without legal authority. By the time the passenger attempts to assert the right to opt out, the passenger's photo has already been pulled from the State Department database into a gallery to be used by the DHS for facial recognition. Further, as the report notes, at land ports of entry where passengers are photographed in vehicles at speed, there is a high risk that passengers will not even know the photo capture and matching is taking place. This risk is amplified by the fact that CB CBP plans to create galleries of images of frequent crosses. So Americans legally crossing the border may have their images captured while inside their vehicles and then put into a database to track their movements. What is the purpose of all this, though? I mean, I can understand if they're looking for somebody in particular, but what are you going to do? Track movements of what? All these millions and millions of people for what? Doesn't make any sense. Half the time people are doing squats. Going about their business. What do you want to do? What do they want to do? See them picking their nose, putting their feet up, watching TV, picking their feet, going to the toilet. I mean, really and truly, they really need a life. They're behaving as though everybody is a bloody terrorist and they're, they're you know, everybody here's got some kind of secret life going on. It's absolutely ridiculous. Anyway. The report dismisses the well-documented disparity of facial recognition accuracy along age, racial, ethnic and gender lines, citing a Microsoft blog post as its only evidence that facial recognition technology has improved. Now, you know, the racial, you know this biometric, um, the facial recognition only recognises black faces or brown faces. That's what they're saying. They're saying it shouldn't really be used because it's faulty, it's defective. It doesn't kind of do a blanket across the board. It's just kind of um, recognising black people. <laughs> just like, don't you get fed up of looking black faces all the bloody time? Ah, oh, get a life, why don't you? Honestly. In September 2018, the DHS Officer of Inspector General raised the concern that CBP could not consistently match individuals of certain age groups or nationalities and that the 2017 match rate was low 85 percent. Can you imagine? That's how bad it is. The report's treatment of this automated discrimination is woefully inadequate. 
Discrimination through automation cannot be tolerated. So even if so even a small disparity in effectiveness is sufficient reason to shut the program down. But they're not going to do that because the whole purpose of this biometric facial recognition is to identify black people and black people only. Don't you understand? Poor things. We have some we have some really sincere people who are really concerned about unfairness, disparity. Um, inequality, racism, but what can they do? They can't believe that this is actually a deliberate, um, they've set it up deliberately to identify, because otherwise that's the only way it can work. They'd have to literally set it up to identify a certain race of people. It's like those drones. They reckon that they can use it to target people with blue eyes, brown eyes, whatever. When the worst comes to the worst, they can say, OK, you know, we're going to set up to kill all the black people. Off you go, drone. Boof, 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 boof. And, you know, it sounds like I'm making a really, I'm, I'm making a joke out of it. But the reality is that so the equipment is so sophisticated, it can target a certain race of people the same way this biometric system has done. So it's not funny. It's really, really serious. But if you take it serious, you're going to get grey hairs before your time and you're going to live a very unhappy life. So what you do, you live for the moment, make the most of each moment, love the person you're with and try not to worry too much about what's going on. Hopefully, whatever death we get is going to be quick, fast and silent. So anyway, back to this. Um, lest I digress. So the last bit is um, the conclusion for the foregoing reasons and um, the Customs Border Protection unauthorised and unregulated implementation of the facial recognition technology at ports of entry creates grave privacy and security risks. Accordingly, the DPAC should advise DHS to immediately end the use of facial recognition as part of the programme. That was the conclusion, but we know they're not going to do that. They're not going to do that, are they? So anyway, I hope you remembered all those acronyms. It's not fun doing this, I tell you. Because I can't sound efficient when I can't even remember half of the bloody initials. But what can I do? There's so many of them. It's like... It's like a legal document, but I hope it makes sense. That's the most important thing. And I hope I simplify enough for it to make sense to you. Take care now. Bye-bye.